it is it is great to chat with you all honestly who's your father is a ton of fun it, it really is and uh thank you so much for chatting with me i appreciate it we yeah. do too we really appreciate it yeah thanks, yeah, thanks for taking the time i'm glad i i'm glad that we could work this out uh where where did the story come from how did it begin um jeremy well again, uh probably about 10 years ago i started writing a film noir script um that was kind of like a ripoff of a movie called detour from the 1940s um that's free on youtube if you can find it and then uh so i took that film noir script and as i was writing it i kind of became interested in private investigation is like trying to do that as like a side gig you know living in toronto you know struggling artist you got to make make some extra money sometimes so i looked into like a one week private investigation course that was offered for 500 bucks I was like, that's a pretty good deal. For 500 bucks, you can like have a second career. So I always also like like Raymond Chandler novels, like The Big Sleep. And uh, so I was really into this idea of being a PI. So I looked into that more, but realized like when I dug into it, that it was actually like quite a boring gig. Like literally <laughs> you just like sitting in your car, car all day doing nothing. And then coming from PEI, I was thinking about like a private investigator on the island where everybody knows everybody. You know, I grew up in the country out here and uh, like the degrees of separation between people are like one or two. Um, so that's where who's your father comes from. You got to find out who's who, who, you, who you're connected to on the island. Um, so from there, I just sort of started writing the script uh, with this private investigation character. And then uh, in that story, a store owner um, who, who eventually became Rhonda Perry started to emerge. Uh, I, Jeremy, I have to rewind for a little bit. So you actually did the course. I didn't, I, I didn't do the course. I wish I almost did. Oh, the you course. didn't complete it or you didn't do any of it. I did. Well, I went in for, to do it a, a gig. I got a job interview to be an editor at a PI firm. Cause it was like, kind of like, okay, I'll, I'll do this job interview. Just to like, kind of like dip my toes into the waters of it. But when I went there, I realized like they were showing me this like surveillance footage of a, an insurance fraud case where they're like waiting for someone to like, who's like cheating on their insurance by like saying that they're hurt and they can't work. Um, so like, they're just showing me like scrubbing through like 10 hours of this footage of like what the PI collected. I was like, I, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> you know, I thought it was gonna be really glamorous, like, you know, chasing down people and, you know, finding out, you know, affairs and everything else, but it wasn't like that at all. Well, you know what the problem was is you didn't have two Christmas trees. That was the issue. Exactly. <laughs> Spy trees, they're spy trees. Spy trees. Yes. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're spy trees. Yeah, you're right. That that's probably the missing ingredient. <laughs> Chris, Susan, what was it that excited you to bring these characters to life? Because your relationship on screen is a lot of fun and the characters just seem like a blast to play. Oh, thank you so much. Uh yeah. I think um when I read the script, I kind of told my agent like this has to be me if he casts anyone else it's he's really stupid <laughs> so I really fought for it hard in the auditions and uh I basically in not those same words tried to convince that to Jeremy but I I don't know if convincing him was that hard it seemed pretty fun in the auditions and, and Sue and I had a great chemistry read together so I think it was the silliness like the it reminded me of like 80s uh early 90s style slapstick comedy so uh thought it'd be really fun to just play a lot like that did i answer your question <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Nice. yeah something like that you know <laughs> don't get uh like in canada especially you know I, i've been doing comedy for over 20 years and you just don't get offered starring roles in a classic incredible comedy that uh also gives you space to create within it too and uh put yourself into it as much as i got to so it was an incredibly uh special moment that i knew i had to snatch up as best i could yeah classic is the word you know it's it really is jeremy wrote something that's so tight it's like it's got so many it's got like all of the elements that you want it's got it's got love and romance. It's also got like zany, ridiculous comedy. It's broad. It's small. There's so much detail in it. There's noir in it. And like, it's true. Getting a script like that is rare. And so we all got together and suddenly it was just like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this is good. This is good. And then at first we were just on Zoom 
you reading the script together and working through it and talking about it and stuff and us like pitching ridiculous ideas to Jeremy that he'd be like I'll, I'll go in and think about it guys <laughs> and then we got together and we started to shoot and it was like oh my god this is a dream yeah yeah Jeremy was a hundred percent steady and confident with his vision but also like um and his is uh his he was like this the whole time can you imagine <laughs> having the production of a whole feature on your shoulders and you're just this chill <laughs> and then also yeah like uh every scene he let us play too and find stuff together uh, as a team too so it's like really a one in a million experience that uh a comedian like me especially is would dying for just once in your life so it was really uh, special you know, you know, the vibe of the film, you talked about that classic vibe. It almost feels like uh, like 80s and early 90s Bill Murray, you know, that sort of that sort of just aloof foolishness that was just stumbling through it. It, it honestly it, and as a viewer, I was watching you, you, you all play on screen. It just sort of felt like y'all were going to camp and just having fun together uh in a good way that's how <laughs> you know that oh, yeah. used the expression of camp already yeah we talked today. about it as like summer camp it kind of felt like yeah. summer camp uh for all of us and then chris and sue stayed at the same motel in charlottetown so they were spending a lot of time together when they weren't on set as well and they would come to set with all kinds of great ideas for scenes so you know when you've got two really brilliant funny people you know you'd be an idiot not to like you know use their ideas and put them into the movie Basically, from like early morning coffee to after dinner beer, like Sue and I were working on the movie the whole time. And uh, yeah, you're right. We it really clicked for us when we started talking about it being like a Chevy Chase, Bill Murray, John Candy. Yeah. Like that's who I started accessing to be like, oh, this is just going to be like our version of those kind of classics, you know? Yeah, it was cool. Well, I, I was wondering for you, for you both, for uh, for. Uh, Susan and Chris just I'm wondering what you think your characters are looking for because it's bigger than a soft serve machine it seems like it's bigger than a soft serve machine your characters are are sort of looking for something I was wondering what you thought that might be I mean what a question that's like that's that's everybody who's who, who's engaged in their life you know what I mean it's like that that eternal question of like what's out there for me what, what's more what, am i satisfied can i have more and i think rhonda is something that i love about rhonda is that she's so um uh certain and uh about going for whatever it is and i mean it happens to be a soft sort of machine for her but like her whole idea about manifesting is like that's kind of what we all do it's like give me what I need universe. Give me, give me what I want, but hopefully you end up getting what you need. And then she gets up, she gets what she needs, which is Lair. Yeah. And I think Larry was never self-aware enough to know that there was something missing inside him. He, I think he kind of knew he was sad, but that's about it. But then I think throughout the film, he's sort of learning that, uh, there can be someone who's sincerely saying nice things to him about him. Yeah. <laughs> and, someone to say nice things and, and to him he about of, him. And sort of starts. That's a high bar. That's that a high can bar. Right there. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, that can be possible. Someone's genuinely being nice, you know? <laughs> like, it feels like that's his big score out of it all, you know? Yeah, yeah it, it's interesting. And by the end, I mean, without saying too much, there's this conversation of like, you know, man, the universe is so big, which is not where he's at at the beginning of the film, you know, as you're both sort of looking into the, into the sky. It's, uh, it's, it's quite philosophical in some ways in that, that moment. Um, and, yes, and I'm reading a ton of philosophy during the making of this movie. <laughs> uh, a lot of, yeah, Schopenhauer, Nietzsche, <laughs> classics. <laughs> I got that sense. I got that sense. Uh, <laughs> the deep, the deep uh, conversations around John Paul Sartre that were taking place as you as the script was being formed. You know, you could, you could really yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. that's right, yeah. But I did want to put that kind of an element of that in there, like 
of the wonder of you know what it all means like those kind of basic questions that we're all asking each other all the time like what is it that we're doing like what's the point of our exist like you know try to put those questions in i think people kind of grapple with and but put it in this light of like fun and kind of rascal hijinks yeah, yeah. it's like I would say the philosophy was like, even a fool can ponder. <laughs> yeah, that, that that fits so well that it that fits so well with this with these characters. Um, I, I have to ask, I have to ask, I know, they never say, or they say, sorry, they always say you should never judge your characters. But I'm just wondering, from your perspective, both of your characters at different times of the film sort of more, more, uh, less Ronda, I would say, <laughs> but sort of have these moments where you're like, should we be doing this? Or maybe we should go another way. I was wondering in your, in your mind, does the end justify the means with these characters? Like they sort of got these things and they're, they're pushing forward no matter what is in their way. Well, maybe it's like what you were saying about, you know, even like the unconscious desires that they're not aware of, like, you know, they have to throw themselves into this mess to build and grow and, you know, discover um, that there is more that could happen between them than they give themselves credit for in the beginning, you know, when they're just drifting along. But I do envy uh, Larry's driftiness, to be honest like going with the flow of it for the most part i interview that aspect of, of larry you know just the simple drifter uh yeah yeah there's something i think really like that i really respect about a couple of people who are just like kicking away at it kicking <laughs> away at it and it's like i don't know what this is I'm, and they end up in like tons of trouble and they make problems that never existed <laughs> But it's like, I don't know, it's like a larger metaphor for like really, really trying and 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 going for it. And, and, you know, they do end up with their beautiful moment at the end. I mean, it's kind of what we all want, right? <laughs> for sure. For sure. Well, yeah. I, I have to ask for the three of you, what would be on your vision board? These are great questions. <laughs> <laughs> they really are. Um, I would just love, yeah, just a picture of a guy with an arm around a babe looking at the universe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like a big soft serve would be on your stop, yeah. <laughs> would be on my vision board. I do it like Rhonda's dream of owning a soft serve ice cream machine is sort of my dream too. Um I live out in the country in Ontario now and I'd like I'd love to have a dairy bar. Um so I, I yeah soft serve ice cream machine would be on there too. And just actually sitting here with these two um is on my vision board too because like making this movie for me was was a dream so that'd be on my vision board uh <laughs> that is like i'm kind of in a weird place where i like i just feel like the word more would be on my vision board you know what i mean like adventure adventure I... that's it like we we don't know when we're gonna die man just <laughs> going for it yeah and yeah I... my vision board has me giving the finger to a tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's amazing. I mean, these, <laughs> these are great. I have to admit, the soft surf one actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> it yeah. yeah. looked good in the film when you guys are, are going to town on those soft serve ice cream cones. I was like, that actually, that actually looks pretty good. That was an incredibly fun day. Yeah, and incredibly filling. Because yeah. we kept having to eat the ice creams down to the point that they were at for the last take. Yeah. We just ate a lot. Yeah, it was like, you guys have like 10 cones or something. Yeah. <laughs> My and you, you were double fisting the yeah. cones. You had two cones every take. My doctor said I can't really eat sugar anymore. But <laughs> on that day, I was like, here we go. Went too far the Hard. other way. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's I go. never thought of that. The continuity, yeah. the continuity issues. I never thought of that with those, that <laughs> yeah. in particular. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, they, they did a good job keeping up with that. But yeah, like the poor gal who kept up and make those cones. I know. At yeah. first, I was like, oh, do I got to lick it down to where it was? For sure, sure. Well, well I'm looking at that by like take one. I was like, oh, 
fuck? <laughs> yeah, and then the crew, the like various crew members were getting like cones. So like by the time yeah. we were doing that thing, like, everyone was holding an ice cream cone. <laughs> like, finishing the last was quite funny. Yeah. It's a grand process. It's a grand process now just to get the yeah. ice cream right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, 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 that's filmmaking right there, you know? Yeah. Oh, they're going to write a scene with, with characters having ice cream cones. They're like, oh, wait, they actually have to have ice cream cones. And we have to have, like, ice cream machines and things working. It's just, like, that's just part of the filmmaking process. Oh, crap. Oh, we crap. What I, why did you like that? <laughs> yeah. You always find yourself writing into those things, too, when you write a script. It's like, oh, shoot, now we actually have to try to do that. Yeah, yeah. And then what, <laughs> oh, a guy's gonna fall off a cliff. How are we gonna do this? Oh yeah, he's just gonna. Oh, I shouldn't say that. Maybe was that a hard part to do? Uh, it's hypothetical. It's hypothetical. Uh, yeah, that we're hypothetically bad. going to do that. Of course, if we hypothetically did that, yes, that would be. Uh, a, it was actually very hard to do. It was probably the most logistically complicated scene in the movie, as far as like planning mm. and and yeah, stunt work and and um, yeah, and then finding a place where we could like be up high and then be down low and make all that work in the same location. Yeah, it was really hard. And we kind of lucked out completely with the location that we had. And the stunt woman we got, yeah, and the Kayla, stunt, who killed it. Yeah, the stunt coordinator was really great to make it work. And yeah, I think it turned out really well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it came out great when in the final in the final edit. I didn't know you had to move things around either. So that, that's good. I mean, hypothetically. hypothetically. Uh, it would have it would have come out great. Uh, <laughs> I, I speaking of the process, the the magical word process that that I heard you say uh, there, Jeremy. Well, at one point, and I think it's Rhonda, says you got to trust the process. And I just wondered what you all think of that, and what does that mean to you to trust the process? I really appreciate how much you, attention you pay to the movie. <laughs> I think more questions of all questions. these things that really are so well because because I see him right now. I did watch it's a hundred percent our best interview of the day. <laughs> well, really? then, I, well, I didn't want that to be a part of the thing. I wanted it to be a fun kind of movie, but like those things were in there for a reason. And I'm glad you're asking about them. Um, trust the process, Chris. Trust the process to me is pretty ambiguous because then you have to go down like a dark what is the process what's a process so i don't know you tell me what you were thinking um it maybe it's like giving yourself up to uh the motion of the the movement of like that kind of process yeah because like because the thing like the element of the movie of chance and fate and all that stuff like i i am fascinated by that stuff and it's like because it does impact our lives like fate and chance brought the three of us together the universe somehow made that happen and like the circumstances all led to us making this movie together um so i am curious about that i think like Rhonda's just eagerness and like go get it-ness i like without questioning things too much and like trusting the process that the, like the, the road will take you where it needs to take you whereas i think like naturally sometimes i'm a bit of a worry wart and i can like get overwhelmed with worry and like like thinking ahead too much sometimes and I think uh, I appreciate that about Rhonda's character, that uh, that she's just going for it and like trusting that things are going to work out. Yeah, it's like you don't have to hold on so hard. Yeah. Larry and Rhonda are two voices that are always in Jeremy's head. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> I got Larry here and Rhonda here. Go with it. Yeah. Oh, that could be terrifying, actually, if six months down the road, that's still the case, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I, I appreciate that. And I, I really appreciate the chance to speak with you. All. I really do. I'm just, I'm just wondering as we start to wrap up what you hope people take away from who's your father. I hope people just like go out and have a really great night. You know, it's like, it's the kind of film that you, you can, there's, there's so many like beautiful kind of feelings that are engendered by this film. It's easy going, it, but it's also it's it's fun it's I don't, I don't i i don't know i just think the feedback that we've gotten is that people are just like leaving feeling great and like what better thing can you do for somebody than and like this film is as a result of like a whole huge group of people and a lot of work you know and a lot of work before chris and i were ever introduced into the process and so i feel like it for all of us it's an an incredible thing that we get to 
show people something that makes them feel good because that's really it that's important like it's a maybe a small thing but it's not a small thing at all yeah no yeah. that's who said so well Go yeah going back to the canadian industry thing too and the canadian comedy industry is like i i really hope everybody thinks this is the funniest movie they've ever seen and it really deserves a place up there in the small limited shelf of canadian content that's actually genuinely very really good because uh i feel like it really is and to see like um a whole packed audience in the theater go nuts from beginning to end at the atlantic international film festival was really like overwhelming to me and I've never experienced feelings like that. And it was really special. So we just need more people to see it and feel that because it was pretty wild. Yeah, it deserves to be up there on that little Canadian shelf. Yeah, of good you had, stuff. You had a great response then when you're showing it and is that what, uh, what I'm hearing? Yeah, we had a great, great reaction yeah. in Halifax to the movie um, when it premiered there in September. It was, yeah, it was really great. Like the hurricane postponed the screen the screening by a day and it didn't look it like it was going to happen. Matter. And then people came in for the matinee on Sunday, and it just got like a really great response. It didn't it even very... matter. It felt like a midnight party. Yeah. It was just such a huge celebration. Yeah. yeah, it was really cool. So, yeah, I just want people to see it. Like, I want people to go out and see it and have fun, like to have a fun night uh, with their spouse, with their friends, with their family, like whoever it is. I just think it's like a really fun night at the movies. It, it really is. It's a blast. It's a lot of fun. Uh, thank you all. Honestly, thank you for your time. And I really appreciate it. I, I wish you the best with the film and have a great day. Thank you. Yeah, so much. Thank you. Yeah, that was you too. Fun. Thanks. Thanks very much. All right.